The recipient of the 2010 Pulitzer Prize for Biography, T.J. Stiles, joins us now from the Southern Kentucky Festival of Books. I'm Barbara Deeb, and we're very delighted to have you with us. You know, especially as we celebrate the sesquicentennial of the Civil War, you do a lot of writing about that time period. And what do you feel like we learn by studying that, and, and, and why the popularity of your books? It must touch something within the reader. Well, I think the Civil War era the Civil War, Reconstruction, expansion into the West. This is really the making of the modern United States. This is, um, I, I just heard uh, David Blight refer to it, the great historian, as the founding of the Second Republic. The United States remakes itself in the Civil War era. And uh, I think it's a time that's not only um, critical for the history of the nation, but the lives that people lived within that period are remarkable. Um, the transformations they went through, the suffering they went through, the triumphs they achieved. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating period to explore. And in terms of writing biography, it's an amazing period to focus on, you know, in following life stories. As you look at, you talk about a, a remaking, do you feel like that's um, cyclical as well in that every population has to go through some type of remaking or rehash at certain cycles in time? I'm not sure I'm, I'm equipped to draw vast conclusions for human civilizations <laughs> overall. Um, I know that in the United States, you know, we've had, um, you know, we've had these conflicts that have led us to um, develop and expand our values, to um, uh, address problems, deep-seated problems we've had. The Civil War, of course, um, you know, addressing those problems cost the lives of about 2% of the population. So it was, um, you know, a horrible period, and yet it led to emancipation, it led to um, the in writing racial equality into the Constitution, though it took some time before it became a reality. And, I mean, the results are, are simply astounding. And of course, as I focus on in my new book, it was a time when the corporate economy began to take off, when industrialization happened, and um, you know there are uh, terrible conflicts that surround that, which makes it fascinating and also terribly important for today. Let's talk a little bit about the research that you do, because you have been lauded for your authenticity. You know, you really do your homework, and you really get the facts straight, the critics say. Mm -hmm. So how do you broach a, a subject? Is it something that comes in your head and you say, I'm going to write a book about this, and then you start the research? How does that work? Well, first of all, thank you very much. Um, you know, I've been focusing on iconic lives, people who have sort of larger-than-life stature in the American memory. And they become iconic, of course, because they represent something to Americans about how they think of themselves. Um, Jesse James has had a certain cultural meaning. He represents something about the way we think of the United States. Um, Cornelius Vanderbilt and all of the so-called robber barons, they have more than one meaning, sometimes conflicting meanings, mm -hmm. but they represent something about how we think about our society. And so addressing them as real people, getting at who they were in reality, getting past all of the, the sort of cultural baggage they carry, and yet it is very important. That's central mm -hmm. to my work. And yet um, I pick them because they are iconic, because they have this larger cultural meaning. And the tension between the two, what we think we know and what they really were, is a really fascinating part of the process. In your research for uh, the the tycoon book, the Cornelius Vanderbilt. What did you learn about him that surprised you? Well, one thing was that um, he's been, personally and sort of historically, I could answer it two ways. One is that he's been represented as this really harsh man within his family, just a, like many cold. business figures, driven, cold, hard on his family, um, unpleasant personally. And I found that there's a basis in truth for that. I mean, the facts do show that he was often tough on his family, a very hard man often to deal with, and yet I found evidence that, um, in fact, he was someone who had warmth, compassion, who had a softer side as well, who often didn't know how to deal with his emotional life. In other words, he was complex. He was an identifiable human being that we can recognize and understand, even if we don't always want to, want to have been around him. Historically, what surprised me is that Early in his life, he was a radical force. Before there were big businesses in America, 
Um, you had an older families that sort of ran the country, the old landed elite from the colonial days. And entrepreneurs, people who insisted upon competition, were actually praised by Jacksonian Democrats as it, these are the egalitarians, these are the individualists. Um, they're overturning the established order of things. And Vanderbilt kept those values and his views all through his life, but he helped to create big business in America. And once you had giant corporations, the sort of laissez-faire attitude became a conservative attitude. And following that process is fascinating. You know, I don't try to use Cornelius Vanderbilt to pitch any views about the modern economy. But I look at the way people argued about him at the time. And it's, it's fascinating. It resonates to today. Well, talk about today a little bit, because you talk about writing about iconic figures. If you had the opportunity to write about an iconic figure in present day, who would that be? Do you know? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a difficult question. I mean, you know, at some point I may move into the 20th or even 21st century, and I've thought, you know, how would I handle it? I, it? It's difficult. One of the things I try to do in my books is with each book I try to find someone I can do something different from the previous book. How do you, how do you mean that? Well, for example, Jesse James was a life um, that was filled with um, violence, military conflict. It had to do with the Civil War and its consequences. And so I thought, I want to write a, a book about um, business an area that a lot of historians have difficulty with, actually, but the rise of, of a, a, a business empire. And I could get further into his family life, for example. My next book is, covers the same period, um, but again, I'm picking somebody I can do something different with. It's um, uh, a book about George Armstrong Custer. Now, he's had plenty of writing about him, but I want to change the camera angle, write about his life in terms of the chronological frontier of the Civil War era that we've been talking about, rather than just the geographical frontier. And again, he and his wife wrote enormous numbers of letters, and I can get deeper into his personal life, look at their relationship in the context of these times. Again, I'm addressing the same period, but I'm going a little farther, doing something a little different from the previous book. But you're the gatekeeper. You're the one who filters the information that comes through. So you could shine the spotlight or the lens mm -hmm. in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so that puts a, a big responsibility on you, I guess, to, to display that, to be genuine. I think that's true. And, you, you know, it, the responsibility differs according to the subject. With Cornelius Vanderbilt, with Jesse James, for example, there's been a lot of good research that's been done about his individual crimes, about different particular aspects of his life. My mission was to tell that dramatic story, but to put it in the context of the times in a way that hadn't been done, I thought, before. With Cornelius Vanderbilt, I was looking at um, someone who's never had a serious biography. So I really had a responsibility to try to cover it comprehensively. With George Custer, on the other hand, George Armstrong Custer, um, here's someone who's had a lot of good writing about him, comprehensively, individual uh, events. So I can sort of take a more interpretive look. I don't have that sense that I must provide the definitive account because I respect the writing that's been done about him. I just want to do something a little bit different. And so it's kind of less of a burden to, gotcha. to provide the definitive account. And just for, for our viewers, do you write every day? Do you make yourself sit down and I'm going to write for X number of hours? How, do you, how does it work? No, uh, it's a little different with a research intensive nonfiction than it is for fiction, I think. Um, I spend, it, with any given book, the bulk of my time is spent in researching. I mean, that takes longer than the writing. And then also there's interpretation. You know, what does this mean? What's going on? Now, having to go back and read what historians have said. And then the writing, I never have to force myself to write. Um, my problem is, is that I spend so much time rewriting what I've written before, it's hard to move along. Um, and that's an essential process, too. And yet to accomplish? What are you going to, what, what, what's ahead? Um, well, uh, I'm going to be working on my, I've already been working on my book about George Armstrong Custer. Custer. I just spent the last week, for example, uh, working in the National Archives. Um, my eyes are, are weak from looking at so much <laughs> microfilm. Uh, thousands of pages of microfilm. But it apparently pays off. You know, off. letter books, yes. Yes. It's, you, I feel like, um, you know, you can't, for me, I can't farm out the research. Occasionally I can ask people to send me copies of things, but the bulk of the research, I have to look at it because it will spark ideas. It will take me in new directions. It will directions change the... To actually go and 
go through everything myself. TJ Styles, continued success. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. From the Southern Kentucky Festival of Books, TJ Styles.